Okay, third time has to be a charm, I hope. Hope I didn't lose all you guys. Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna just talk to myself if I have to. This is weekend wind down and we're having technical difficulties. So <laughs> it's um, what we wanted to talk about today. I know you're here, I'm afraid to bring you on because I know you're having technical difficulties. So, so maybe we can you know, do a little typing in the chat for me. If everyone could share, I know I asked you to share before, but then we dropped and I'm going to add Joe. He's a parent and an entrepreneur, so, and he's always a great person to have on. So we're gonna go live, Joe, you ready? I'm going to cross my fingers and toes that your technology is working from wherever you are today. And I had such a nice description in there about how we were going live. Hi, Diana. I had a. <laughs> you know what? You're the one who taught me how to do this. So it's only right that you're one of my guests uh, again, right? Because we it, just did um, last week. I, I had to put on. I had to put on a shirt and headphones. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Now we're... It's not Naked Friday. No, Thursday. <laughs> I could, you know, it kind of is the same thing for me. So that's a bummer. Yeah, you got to, you have to be on Wi Fi uh, with a good signal and you've got to uh, put it on airplane mode so it doesn't have all the other junk going in the back. That's why my phone was burning up. Uh, that's why the bad connections. So. Yeah, oh, it does, it does require mode? a little bit of, yeah, yeah. How is my sound, uh, everybody? FYI, FYI, you got to do the airplane mode first because it's going to kick off your Wi-Fi, and then you've got to attach the Wi-Fi again. I did do that. So. I discovered that once you put it in the message. Let me just straighten myself out. Um, I actually, these new iPhone 8s suck because you can't plug in your headset without the little stupid adapter that you're always going to lose and when you Oh, do you have it, headphones on? I don't right do now because okay. I was low if battery. You do the the uh, the voice will be uh louder even if you do the little headset. I know, but my phone headset. is plugged in. I'm low battery. So, let's see how long it'll last me before it just says goodbye. Oh, you got the iPhone. That sucks. It sucks. iPhone. Why do I don't like iPhone? <laughs> I love my iPhone. I love my iPhone. Oh but man! The new one they took out the they took out the the adapt. It's so stupid. They took out the headphone you want a, jack. You want a secret? Look, what? I I have this here. I have the microphone, and it's always like off the camera. It's not even plugged in. It's just <laughs> it's props. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Just, I got yeah. a bigger microphone than you. Look at this baby. Well, you know, I wasn't comparing microphone sizes. <laughs> Whoa, what's up with your weekend wind down? When did it turn into this? All right, I'm let me cool. I'm I'm unplug good with it. and try to put in my headset and see if I sound better. Cause... It's okay. They're just saying that I'm louder than you. But well, that that's might always just the be case. True. <laughs> yeah, that might be true anyhow. All right, let me get set up here. So, were we talking single parenting and trying to juggle? Because I could talk on that. You I know, talk on that. it doesn't have to be single parenting because I wasn't single for 25 years um, and I raised my kids and I ran a business, but certainly single parenting is even more of a challenge. Now that I'm single, my kids well, are older. Have you read my story? Or have you uh, seen my, my stuff about that? No. No. So a uh, single parent, uh, I, I, I raised my kids myself. I had full legal and physical custody. Wow. Uh, my Two boys had uh, febrile season, uh, so, so you know it was just rough. But um, but uh, we ended up in court when my youngest was three years old, and um, mm. and um, and for the first time in our lives, she now had fifty percent visitation. I had full legal physical; she had fifty percent visitation. Okay. So I uh, okay. I went to I worked at Triton Chandelier at the time. Um, and, uh, I like 15 bucks an hour CAD department. Um, I was on the job for three months. I made manager uh, supervisor. So I got a pay increase. And so I went to the owner and I said, Hey, uh, let's, let's bookmark that. So I'm at 15. I'm supposed to get to 18. Let's, let's bookmark it, but keep paying me 15. And I want you to pay me to go volunteer in my kids' classrooms on Mondays and Tuesdays. So he was like, cool, saved him some money. Didn't think that I'd actually do it every week, and I did. And, <laughs> and you got your time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, 
three months later, I made manager. So went back to him and said, okay, so we're supposed to be at 18 and uh, we're supposed to be go to 21. So let's bookmark it. And uh, I want to go volunteer. I want to be a uh, room parent and go on all the field trips. And so, uh, so I took for, for preschool all the way through elementary school, I got to uh, volunteer Mondays and Tuesdays and go on all field trips and celebrate birthdays with all the kids as friends. Um, my kids at the time didn't know that we were broke as shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, they were too young to know. I mean, like, you know, so um, instead what they did know was that I knew all their friends. Their friends all knew me. Um, and I would have to say I, I was probably around that time, maybe sooner, that I, I adopted the idea that you can always earn a buck, uh, but you can't get that time back with your kids. So, um, that's so true. I, I'll, the juggling is in always the long so run, tough, I didn't but you, you know what? This is, that's good. I mean, you know what? Your business skills really, what I'm hearing is that you negotiated a deal that worked for you that balanced your life, which is something not a lot of people would consider doing. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even consider asking. Uh, you, you might've thought about it, but like, they're afraid of, uh, afraid of no's. Uh, this dude <laughs> he jumps into the fire all the time because, you know, what the hell you got to lose? Um, I heard John Travolta in an in a interview recently uh, said, uh, they asked him, they asked him some question. I forget what the question was, but he said, so he realized in life that he had nothing, but he, he, he could have a chance at, at all this. So, so if he took a chance and he failed, well, he was just back to nothing. So Absolutely. what did it risk to give it a shot? Um, walking into that office, like, uh, I was going to get a pay increase. That was mine. Um, so what did I have to lose by swapping that out? You know? I love that. I love that you took a risk. And my story is so, so different from yours, which is why I, you know, Shana said, I like Joe. <laughs> I'm like, good, because he took your place. We got to get you on oh, when you're in a better way. I'm sorry car. about that. <laughs> Have her call in. Call, uh, oh, call in through Facebook on your desktop and put the sound on and let's have a three-way. Uh, let's have a three-way conversation. <laughs> I don't know. Can she do that? Oh, that's going to be yeah, so confusing. Her... You're really challenging my comfort zone here, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> have, her, have her call in, and then, uh, then it'll throw the sound in the background, and then we'll be able to have a, a conversation. Oh, that's hysterical. Well, Shatina, if you want to try, you can certainly try. I don't know what I'm doing on my page And then here. while I'm doing that, I'll, uh, I'll share. I am the share working King. on... Yeah, I am working on a uh, a documentary that I'm going to be out in Vegas pitching to manufacturers. So, hey, manufacturers, if you guys are listening, I'm going to be hitting you guys up next week. Um, <laughs> I'm looking to do a documentary style movie uh, called Market the Movie. And we'll be following Kelly Ellis and this girl, Megan, who's the uh, uh, student, interior design student in Orange County. We're following them through their journey through market. Uh, nice. Megan will have an opportunity to talk to the different manufacturers. The manufacturers will be able to explain to her in, in lay terms how their business operates and kind of the unique selling uh, features. And, um, and then we're looking to take that when it's all done, put it into a film, and then uh, put it out to um, the uh, trade associations to do a mm -hmm. premiere night so that all the different chapters of ASID, IDA, IDS, IDS. Other initials, <laughs> yeah, uh, can all do like a premiere night, uh, awesome. sign copies and uh, yeah, it should be really fun. The big hook is that when we're done releasing it through them, uh, we're already talking with Netflix, Hulu, Amazon uh, to then syndicate it on digital platforms. So with all your juggling now, how old are your kids and do they have any like effect on all that you do because you do everything. Yeah, they are uh, 18 and 19. Uh, you'll see two things that I post on social media. Uh, you'll only see two of them. You're going to see me talk about work, 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 <laughs> more work. And then you're going to see me talk about my kids. And uh, when we have like pivotal moments, like their graduation, I kind of use Facebook to let them write them a letter and let them know that uh, just how much of an impact they have on me. Oh, that's the awesome. two best things that I've ever been a part of 
if I could be anywhere else right this minute, I would be with my kids. But they've got jobs. They go to school. Uh, they don't need me like that. So, so no, um, I get it. I have I'm a twenty-four-year-old to... and a twenty. Uh, well, this month, twenty-four, twenty-two, and eighteen. And I was saying to my sister, who I don't know if is is watching Shana the other day, was asking about uh, calling in. Um, she can oh. call in um, on your on your Facebook. Just go to Messenger, mm -hmm. and dial in through your Messenger, and that should do it. Uh, it'll get her uh, through. Yeah, there's the a sound little. On your there's a little phone on you, when you pull up Messenger. I'll type. Yeah. I'll type here, right here. Um, so I was telling somebody the other day, like my happiest days. I, I work crazy hours, like you. I'm working all the time. When I there's, that's my hobby. It's my career. It's everything. Oh, she's calling. Hold on. Okay, let's see if, no, I got to turn up my volume on my computer, which I had turned down now. Oh, are you there? Nope, it's a bad connection. Oh, man. Bummer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, now I hear oh. you. Hello. Okay, I didn't know what you picked up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I got it. Up. I'm going to put it a little louder, which is going to blow my ears out, but everyone else it'll be better for, I think. Okay, I think I had to put you on mute on the computer. <laughs> Wait, then I can't hear you. Uh, you know what? Your name is Joe Hacker, but Hacker would be better because you have all these little computer hacks going on all the time. <laughs> you teach us all so much. It's like if you want to know how to do something technology-wise, check with Joe. Yeah, By the you way, may I'm have to be relay some of uh, what I say because uh, Kaden mentioned that she won't be able to hear me because you got the headphone on. So... Oh, all time crazy woman. So I take the headphone back off. She won't be able to hear Joe, though. Okay. All right. Right. I hear, uh, yeah, because I hear him in my ears and then I hear him in the computer. All right. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going without the headset, so I'm not going to sound as good just to try to accomplish this conversation. Now so, I got more sound to me. Woo -woo. <laughs> so let's start again. We're talking about being a parent and being a, a mom and a dad and raising kids. So. Tell us a little bit about yourself again, because I deleted the other two bad videos, I think. And we'll go from there. Did I lose you again, Shatina? No, I'm here. I'm here. It's just I was getting confused. I hear you in my ear, then I hear you on the computer, too. Okay. Oh, maybe you should and leave the headphone on then, because she can hear me on live. I don't you know. might want to put your headphone back in then. Which... Joe said you might want to put your headphone back in too. No, no, Nancy, you might. Oh, me. Oh, because she can yeah. hear you too. No, I do have my headphone on. All right. All right. My yeah. So, so if you have, this is craziness. We have 14 people watching. Isn't this craziness? All right, hold this on. Is, this, <laughs> is, this is live, which is awesome. You, you, you know, we can watch, we can all watch right. the regular I'm stuff all, all the time. I'm putting my headset back on. We can watch the regular stuff all the time, but this is uh, this is so full of character. All right, I'm, I am going to keep you all on topic. Yes, no wine yet. Yes, Sally, I'm drinking, and it's this. Well, I'll cheers. I'll cheers. cheers you on that. Nobody I'm really doing... knows what's in here. Yeah, wait. What is this? This mine is a Pinot Grigio today. Um, so we're talking about, and I want to stay on topic, guys. Parenting and being an entrepreneur and the challenges of that and the tricks you've had over the, over the years. So Joe already told us one story about how he was able to sort of negotiate with his manager years and years ago to get time off to be in his kid's school at the times he wanted to be in the school. Well, for me, um, oh, you asked me to do an introduction. I'm going to do it really briefly. Go ahead. I'm not sure who heard me. Well, I am a, the, uh, I'm the founder of Real Sisters Rising Women Business Association. It's going on 15 years, and I started this when my children were really young. It was mostly virtual, and the organization took on a life of its own where I had to start, you know, adjusting my time with business and kids, and it was such, I mean, it was a fun challenge because the kids started learning about entrepreneurship, but yeah, like, 
growing my business, I used to have meetings, chapter meetings in my house. And my baby was growing up watching all these women come and talk about business. And they used to sit at the computers. And nobody even knew they were there. You know, it was like, they're like, where are your kids? I'm like, she's sitting right there, you know, because I had to teach them, like, mommy has company. Do your homework or do this and do that. I have some tips to share with some of the moms, too, that might help, you know, as we talk. But, yeah, it was, um, my baby was about, I'm going to say about three, yeah, she was three years old. She was born in 2001. She had two, two or three when the organization was legally birthed and, and I used to have her sitting at the computer. I created this website that had all the links to all the children games and learning um, the learning things that they to learn ABCs and one two threes and everything. And she was able to go, go into this website and click on all her games. As long as she had that in front of her, I can have my meeting. Can you imagine that the moms and dads felt years ago before technology? Joe, I'm getting a little feedback on where I don't know if you're the one playing. Are you playing Shana live on your computer? No, I have you. My computer's on mute. Okay. I can hear very clear on mine. She okay, sounds so, wonderful. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm getting a little feedback. No big deal. I'm used to it. Um, so can you, like, we used a lot of technology when our kids were younger to try to keep them occupied while we worked. You know, I remember my mother saying, just put them in the playpen. Just put them in the playpen. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm okay. thinking, I don't know why that doesn't work for my kids, because I never used a playpen. They, or They climb out. They, they climb out. We, we train them to be Darn more them. adventurous. <laughs> they stay in out. there. They stay in there. We wanted, they wanted interaction. Um, mm -hmm. you Damn know. them for being so needy. <laughs> my oldest daughter, she wasn't the technology one. She's the one that had to be really creative and think of things for her to do when she was younger. But at that time, I really wasn't a business owner per se. I was like the kitchen entrepreneur. So I used to do hair in my house to make some extra money. Right. And I used to have to calculate in my mind how long it's going to take her to finish coloring this book. How long it's going to take her to finish playing with those dolls and, you know, pace myself when I'm doing braiding hair and the other things I would do. I would pace myself around how long it would take for her to get bored with that particular project. Right, right. You're blocking your time, basically, based on how long your kids' activities will take. Yeah, yes. it's, it's definitely not easy. And I know a lot of the people out there are sort of, I won't say, like, they're, they're doing a side gig as an entrepreneur right now because they have young kids, and it's very hard to do it full time. And there were years, I mean, I went from being a, a first vice president in a bank to leaving that on a package deal when they were laying off. I was actually, unfortunately, laying off a bunch of people. And when I saw the packages, I was pregnant with my second one. And I said, you know what, maybe I need to take a package. Because when I started to calculate how much childcare would be along with um, the clothes and the dry cleaning and the commute and how much time I was missing out on them growing up, I thought this is totally not worth it. So I took a package and left. I, I lasted about two months after the no i guess about two months till i had the baby and then another eight months later i was like okay i need some time to myself and i went back and became a personal fitness instructor i went to hofstra i got a, a certification in that i was in the best shape of my life don't throw it in my face now <laughs> it was like it was like a great time um and then i got pregnant again and i had my third and my son was born with a heart anomaly and he had to have open heart surgery at three days old, five days old. Thankfully, it's starting to go in the history of my brain now. Um, and he was quarantined for two years. So I had two young ones. I had a uh, four and a half and a two and a half or a three and a half and a five and a half and a newborn that was quarantined and had just had open heart surgery. So talk about crazy years of my life. It was really hard to pursue anything. And I didn't for those two years. I said, you know what, this is more important. I have to be home with him and I, them and make sure everyone was happy and safe. I could then go and really, really build this. Um, okay. So my son is saying I'm not live, but you guys can. I see you now. I see it's unfrozen, but I will have you on mute on the computer, but I hear you in my ears. Okay. And my sister. Just and says, Andrew and Stormer is watching right now too. From uh, I believe it's Lux. Hey Andrew. Okay. Hey Andrew, hit share. <laughs> yeah, I we're dropping people. I bet just because it's freezing for some people. 
I not for me. I, I don't know why. That. I mean, I can hear both Maybe of you. Maybe it's just a day. Is it, how's the weather in your area? It's cold. Oh, okay. that might be. But it's not raining anything? Yeah, Caden says it keeps dropping. No, no. I'm in New York like you. I'm in Long Island. Okay. So. Yeah, well, we can enjoy ourselves Ooh. then. Exactly. We'll have fun and they can watch it later. <laughs> uh, um, it does calm but anyway. Yeah, but for me, um, when oh, I, on like, my end, whenever I get stuff in, I got to look at During the, the entrepreneur phase, I had a full-time job working nine to five. I was working in Queens, actually, and Rikers Island. And that was like two hours with my, um, public transportation away. So every morning, wow. I would have to get the kids to school like extra early, make sure they go to school for breakfast because I had to get to work. And then I would go to work, come back, get the kids, fix them up, and work on the business. Wow. And um, at that time, I was building my business, and I was really heavily into network marketing. So I was going to the meetings every week. I was building a team. It was all successful, but I was worn out. Not to mention, I had a boyfriend who wanted quality time. So it was like, okay, How dare he? Oh, man. <laughs> So, yeah, my kids, I, that I, too. I was like, regardless of what, when it was time for school, when they got home, I wouldn't do no business, nothing, unless I had to go to a meeting, but I would um, cater to them, like, you know, dinner, back bathing, homework help, all that good stuff. But, you know, you know, the person who, like, felt all the pain was him, because <laughs> <laughs> he was last on the list. Right, right. Well, that's usually what happens. The relationship ends up being last when your kids are younger. Because you have to take care of the kids, right? They can't take care of themselves. That's that's the problem. They can't take care of themselves. Right. So I mean, and and know, back then too, yeah, like was there wasn't challenge. so much the. Uh... I have one little baby. One, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she was like in kindergarten. My oldest daughter was in middle, just starting middle school. So it's different schools, you know, running around different school activities, and I was one of those parents that was on the PTA, I was on the leadership team, you know, I was an active parent, and I was very rebellious when it came to work, because if my child got sick, and they asked tell my boss, I'm leaving to go check on my child, or this is going on in my child's school, they said, oh, you can't go, I said, no, I was not asking you, I was just letting you know why I'm not going to be here, or why I'm leaving. Right. Right. And eventually, you know, I had to get fired. But um, <laughs> yeah, you had to get fired. So I know Joe wanted to jump in. It's hard for you, uh, Shachana, because you can't see our faces. Um, so Joe, what were you going to say? Um, shoot, I forget now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I was going to say so. So uh, it. So I know I. I uh, you lost it was completely. Tougher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you lost it dating, dating was tough for me as too, as well. Uh, you know, really like uh, uh, for guys, it's kind of the same thing. Like you'd think like a girl would understand, but they they don't necessarily. They they want the time too, and they want to go. They're single. They want to go out and do stuff too. Um, uh, you know, it it really did come down to like uh, figuring out the priorities. Um, yeah. And. Uh, and I, and I, I did some things where, I, like, so I know so many single parents, and, and this is kind of a single parent and entrepreneur thing. It kind of blurs when you're a single parent. Definitely. It's parent first, whatever you're doing after. Absolutely. Um, but um, the, you know, I hear a lot of single parents, and like, oh, well, I would never bring a guy or a girl around until after I've gotten to know them. And uh, so me personally, I, I mean, unless you got like no restraint and you got to like be humping somebody's leg, like oh, then stop. Be, a, be an adult and, and like I, I have guy and girlfriends, like they can come around just because I, I like one more than the other. doesn't mean she's got to sit on my lap or, you know, we got to be doing whatever. So, um, so I didn't really buy into that. Uh, I was too busy to try to lead two different three different lives, the single, the, the parent life, the work life, and then to try to do this other, let me try to date as a third life was so hard. I was just, that, that was, that never worked out. I just said, well, screw it. You know what? Um, I, you know how many times I date a person and then like find out that uh, my kids didn't even like her or she didn't, you know, so I was just for like, ah, let's just all get to know each other as friends and 
whatever comes of that comes of that. And right. Maybe nothing. Right. But the social life, no matter whether it was for dating or even with friends, it became it becomes so much harder when you're a single parent. I mean, again, I wasn't divorced to like five years ago, so I had a nice balance. I was lucky, you know, I, when I had to work, um, he understood I had to work and he knew I was a workaholic. So there you go. Um, right. and, he would take, and he would take the kids and bring them somewhere and say if I had to work. So that was so helpful. I can't even imagine. I mean, I became a, not really a single parent because he's still very close and helps out and the kids are older now, they do what they want to do. But, um, I can't even imagine having been a single parent running a, trying to run a business or up a business in those years. It it's, would be so difficult. Like, how do you not lose yourself in all of that? Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. If she, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Shachana, can you hear? And am I saying your name right? Shashina. 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 Okay, so so I don't know if uh you know, um, yeah. yeah. So with me, I I I was really yeah, Shashin. I was really stressed out at some times. At the beginning, it was like really stressful, and I had started networking with other entrepreneurs when I was in the um, network marketing company, and I was meeting. Um, women who were in like support groups that was non-business related and I would attend these meetings and it was like when I go there it was just like a, like a vacation we yeah. had scented candles and everything and we would laugh and then it would all be over because I'd get a phone call mommy when you coming home so <laughs> I would, that would be that time I would let my head down and just let it be about me until I got back home yeah, that was always the hardest, no matter where I was. And it's still the case. I, you know, for me, if my kid calls, I pick up the phone. I mean, I could be in the shower. And it's like, oh, my kid's calling. I got to I gotta pick up. And, and maybe that wasn't such a smart thing to do. But it's, it's like Joe said, it's like your priorities. I'm getting some static, so I keep lowering it a little bit. Um, it's your priorities as, as the primary parent you know, you guys probably had the same thing when the phone rang. It was the school and it was um, your kid you picked up. I'll, and every, Right. I'll share that. Uh, that uh, so so that single. Say, it, 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 they just call in for something. You know, they just want to say something. And then you might say it's not important. That might be the time you think it's that, you know, it's important. Right. So right. I'll, sh I'll share ahead, that, um, that um, um, and so single dad and I know a bunch of my guy friends uh, whether straight or gay or in the design industry we've got you know whatever we're all having we all have are having kids and and um so I'll tell you as from a guy's perspective single single dad's perspective I'm sure I've got a lot of uh uh male dads who are responsible for their kids uh friends that are listening and in the industry um I uh I, I got a call one day and uh the school said that my son had fallen off the, the monkey bars. He's climbing on the monkey bars. He fell. They're not sure if he passed out, but he might have. So, you know, hey, uh, you might want to take him to the hospital. So I run oh, over God. to my boss right down the hall, and, and I was like, hey, I, I got to go. My son fell off the monkey bars, and, and uh, you know, I got to take him to the hospital. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, go, go, go. But, but why you? And I was like, what? Uh, really? Um, you know, well, why me? Or well, the school call. You know, and he's like, no, no, I totally understand. But, but, um, what about their mom? And I was like, what? Oh, they're, dude, you know, that their mom isn't like, doesn't do this shit, you know? And I was like, I was like, I gotta go. And he's like, no, no, I totally understand. But like, you don't have family in the area. I was like, I quit. Wow. And, uh, I left. And the next day I groveled my job back. Um, <laughs> and did? he did that to me one more time. And, uh, and then by the third time I was done. Um, uh, so, so on, on, on my perspective, and I'm sure, and I don't know how this works with, um, uh, with my, uh, my guy friends that are, you know, raising their kids right now, but, um, um, I know a, a, a few of my friends, uh, recently, a two male household raising their kids. Um, and, um, and I don't know, I, you know, I'd have to say at least, at least one of them, it, it works for themselves, but, uh, 
you know, we got a couple that, that uh, work for other people. Um, and I do wonder, uh, you know, if they can relate to that, that, uh, that, that still that kind of discrimination, I guess. Totally. Um, That's the word that I've been wanting to get in. That is total discrimination. I can't believe they, I mean, just to ask, you know, what about their mom? But then to go further and keep asking about, you know, well, what about other family as if it's not your responsibility? That's infuriating. You know, and I didn't understand the question at first. I was like, oh, wait, what? Because I'm like running out the door. I'm like, right. And the guy's like, oh, but, and but, and but. And I was like, oh, I get it. Screw that. Yeah. I mean, that's why I loved being an entrepreneur. And as I built Expressive Living, which is closed now because I'm coaching, but um, 15 years of building Expressive Living was really 100% built while my kids were being raised. And I had two people, you know, one person working in the house and then a second person working in the house. And they would come after the kids. Uh, I, I set it up where they come after the kids were in school and they would leave before the kids were home from school. But, you know, kids are sick and, and the kids are home and, and you know, they, they're on vacation and, and things happen. But I have to tell you, all three of my kids are really incredible business people. Mm. It's interesting how, like, I felt so much guilt when they were growing up that I would sometimes let them be, so to speak, while I, well, mommy has to work, you know, can you go do something, find something to do? Um, I mean, yeah. I, was a, I, I was a great mom. I took them places. I was the chauffeur. I participated in, um, actually, I participated early on in things like PTA, and then I stopped as my kids, my other kids got older, because I was like, you know what, I, I just couldn't I keep that. it up. I couldn't do everything. I did the same thing uh, uh, preschool through, el uh, through elementary school. I volunteered. I was super active. Junior high, I backed out. I was on the principal's advisory committee. Um, I knew the teachers, but, hey, this is their space now. Um, right. Junior right. high, uh, I knew the principal. I knew the coaches, but I didn't have to. Th those are their relationships. And I always looked at um, elementary school is when I raised my kids. Junior high was when I coached my kids. Uh, by high school, if we couldn't have a conversation and if we didn't have trust, then I, I screwed up a long time ago. Right. Uh, by high school, there was no grounding. There was no, if we couldn't have a, a straight up conversation with each other, then, so. Oh, yeah, I just, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, that's it, a good way of looking at it. I know Shachina was trying to come in. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How old are your kids now, Shachina? My daughter is 16 and 25. Okay. So we're, yeah. all, we're all kind of in that zone of through the thick of it, through the little problems, and now if we're lucky, we won't have any big problems. Yeah, and so, I also had a situation with, with my job. They had told me one time, my oldest daughter, she had gotten to a fight in school, and they said, did you call uh, her grandmother, her aunt, or somebody else. I said, I'm the one who pushed her out. I'm going to the school. You know, so it's, it's, it's a challenge when you when you're pissed off. They don't understand sometimes. And it's not that they don't understand. They just worry about what needs to be done at work. Um, you know, so I don't know if she'll be able to hear me, but uh, so, yeah, so I always kind of... Big, and they all want to do this as well. Right. That's good. All right, go ahead, Joe. Your turn. So uh, I don't know. I kind of approached. Um, I don't know why at a very early age I kind of approached it this way, but uh, the I don't and I don't know the aha moment. But um, uh, my kids didn't pick me. I picked them daily. So um, uh, they got stuck with me. They, they, it, <laughs> it's true. It, you know. So and I, I just it, it drove me crazy as a kid. And then, uh, and then I'd hear parents and they fight with their kids and, you know, this is my house. Well, I, the kid didn't get to choose that, you know, <laughs> and you want to leave, then fine, the door's right there. And you're like, you know, I didn't even get to pick you. I'm just, I'm stuck here. I didn't, I didn't get the rich <laughs> parents. I didn't get the, you know, I got stuck with you. And so to like, take that attitude with my kids that like, you know, somehow they had to listen to me because, well, I, I knocked up their mom. Well, that, that <laughs> sucks, you know? That's yeah. a shitty way to approach uh, treating a, a human being as a human being, you know? No, um, it's true. So, you know what? We had that. I don't know. 
We have yeah, that. I just I don't know how many people are listening because I, I dig your topic, uh, and and your topic relates to the work life balance, um, and and especially as entrepreneurs like uh, entrepreneurs are crazy. Uh, we don't turn it off. I don't know about you, but uh, but <laughs> five o'clock it's not like oh turn it off. Oh my uh, God, I've been working fourteen, fifteen hour days, and those are the days that I sleep. Uh, yeah, but I'm in a big push now. So it's like you go into these, I go into these 90 day pushes. I know it sounds like my microphone's rubbing, but I don't think it's my microphone. I think it's some other static. Um, it could be my, my microphone is like right in this, this. Oh, it's in the, it's hair. in the, it's in your nest there. <laughs> yeah. so you're like, why, why does it sound scratchy? Yeah, Caden keeps going. Your microphone's rubbing on your shirt. I'm like, I don't think it's me. I think it's Joe's beard. We're going to blame your beard for everything. <laughs> if I lose it, though, you might not know who I am. <laughs> I've true. been told this in person. Oh, so. that's so funny. <laughs> <coughs> now I'm coughing. Okay, so where were we? Yeah, I mean, your kids didn't choose to be here. You chose to bring them into the world. And it's kind of like a responsibility to try to do the best you can to, to raise them and still go after your ambition to be an entrepreneur. Like, I know, well, I always wish guys... I could be a stay-at-home mom who was happy just cooking three meals, not, not just, I mean, cooking three meals a day and taking care of the household and, and setting up activities for their children. I felt like I liked doing that, but I... It, it didn't drive my energy as much as I would have liked. So it was really doing an injustice to them. If I didn't work, I wouldn't be happy. And you know, an unhappy parent in the household really just screws up the whole household. Well, so question, yeah. um, uh, when did you decide, because very early on, I gave up on, on me. And I said, well, you know what, for me, uh, I'll be 39 when my kids are graduated from high school. I, I knew that the day my son was born, my, my second was born. I was like, well, I'll be 39 years old when he graduates from high school. Um, so, so for me, I kind of put that out of my head. And I just figured I would work for companies. And one day uh, where I'd put off, you know, uh, work. And uh, there would be one day that I would just be a workaholic. Uh, I never even considered working for myself. That that didn't come until really? um, the kids were in junior high. Um, I I had worked for other companies, so I, I had, didn't even consider working for other people. I had um, it different. I mean, I had a husband who had a steady job, and I had the luxury, and it really is, it's a luxury of of changing careers and remaking myself a couple of times and still having another person in the household that cared just as much for them and spending time with them. So if, when I was a personal trainer, he would come home from work. I'd be like, goodbye. And then I'd go on and do my job at the gym. And when I started expressive living, I mostly did that during the day. So I was available for them when they got home from school, but in between for sure. And Caden's on the, on the, uh, feed here he can tell you yeah mom worked hey. a lot so is he fact checking right now hey Caden you can go ahead and fact check just put in the comments uh no and uh, fact check this for us this <laughs> let, a, let, let's just say I don't want to well I'm afraid to bring him on live because I'm not sure what he would say no I know you know what he is uh my top person in my company when it comes to all we my all technology know this is fake news anyhow fake news, <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> and <laughs> fact checked <laughs> fact checked you know that what? Was and, quick <laughs> and he's a, he's a he's a great business uh man my my daughter, who's in her last year of college, is in uh, retail right now. She's in she, everywhere she works. They want her back. Um, and my son, who's in college, he's a, he's a musical theater major, but he is got all those like communication skills and sales skills that he can really do anything he wants in life, um, which will be awesome. And and a lot, they have said to me two out of the three at least, that it's a lot because of seeing their parents. Uh, my ex is a financial advisor, so he works on his, you know, for his, himself, and he's got those sales skills, those personable skills, those communication skills, all so key when you're an entrepreneur, right, to have good communication skills um, and people skills. And they all really got that from observing us, both of us, running our own business. And for, for – my daughter, it's kind of like, you know what, it's okay for a woman to have a career also while she's raising her kids. Um, but sometimes it was faster progress. And 
<laughs> oh, all, all the corporate. Right. Oh, here's some dirt. Oh, Where's Katie at? Something. Let some me tell you this story. Tax workarounds, huh? Oh, let me tell you this oh, story. No, this was funny, Caden. You tell me how old you were. Whoever said it, one of your your siblings. Somebody said like they wanted to buy something, and I'm like, you know, that's really expensive. You can't you can't buy that. And they're like, no, mom, it's not going to cost us anything. Dad's going to put it on his business. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm like, wow. oh, hold on. So you think that dad putting something on his business means it doesn't cost us anything? And they're like, yeah, isn't that the way it of course works? Not. Oh, yeah. my God. I, I laughed and then I sat down and had a lesson. Like, okay, it costs things, but he's deciding that he could, you know, do this as a business expense, but no. Um, so we're saving on taxes. We're not but they thought it was free talk about doing our is kids an injustice and understanding right <laughs> exactly a, oh it was like it was, what's the what's the um statute of limitations it was like 20 uh, years ago <laughs> you know what i think they'd give it a shot anyhow Kaden, why'd you why'd you you read it after you're a whistleblower <laughs> i'm the one who told the story Shh. um but yeah it was the it was the funniest thing at the same time i went oh where you know, definitely giving them the wrong message here. We've got to remake this, you know, financial model. Um, I don't remember how old, how old everybody was, but now they get it. Nothing's free. What? What? I, I assumed I've been doing this all wrong then. <laughs> Should Tina, you want to hop in here? Hey, I'm, um, no, I was just enjoying your story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have other stories of yeah, corporate fraud? Um, my kids, when they come to the business, my youngest daughter used to be like, yes, and it's everything I do, she pay attention to my conference calls or when I'm talking. She's like, isn't that a tax write-off? See <laughs> that? We, everywhere we go, she's like, is that a tax write-off? I'm teaching them how to evade taxes and be a good business person all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, thankfully, I caught them young enough that they know better now. Right, Caden? You know better now. Yeah. Um, but you know what? They do learn a lot. And I think that's so important when you're a parent and an entrepreneur or even working for another company and you have to do these workarounds and figure out how you're going to be with your kids at those key moments and then be there for your boss, if you're working for another company or from, in my case, grow my business every year. There were years it was baby steps. And then there were years that were leaps and bounds, depending on how well the kids were doing. And it all depended on how well they were doing and how much involvement I needed in their day to day life. Well, and I don't know how, how responsible I was. I, I did uh, a <laughs> single parent it as a guy. So, um, and their mom did live in the city over, she was like, you know, 20, ish minutes away um but junior high i started traveling for work so like i went mm -hmm. out to australia oh uh, we never locked our doors uh so all their friends knew that they could come over whenever they wanted i'd come home the kids would be at their mom's and their friends would be hanging out like it was just it was a shit show it just always was uh again that's when i installed my... cameras oh really see i didn't i uh <laughs> outside the house not know, inside quite the house. Honestly, look what you know of me right now can you imagine my kids are like freaking angels they look at me and they're like oh shit dad's <laughs> already done it like in other words dad's yeah. the biggest kid and where are the yeah. adults <laughs> no no uh in, in, L in preschool and then again in third grade and then in, again in high school my youngest sported a mohawk and i was the one like doing leopard spots on it and coloring the mohawk and no like <laughs> They, I, you know, just kind of took away the, yeah, shit, you get only a kid once, like, you know, I, we live with all this stupid freaking stress anyhow, like, this adulting shit, it's bullshit, like, it's just made up, I hear parents, like, come up with all these rules, oh, you know, gotta be a parent, oh, you, what do you mean okay, by that? Okay, that's me, so stop, I was the oh, parent. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I was the, the dad that would be, would wake up that morning, and the kids are, eating waffles, just kind of getting through their day. And I'm like, I'll just throw, throw some freaking ice cream on that. Like, I, when, you know, oh I'm still waiting for their parents to show up. Uh, <laughs> and, and maybe I, you know, maybe I just I approached it differently. But, uh, but and we used to say that all the time. I'd be like, you know, one of these days, your dad's going to show up and he's going <laughs> to kick my ass for all the crap I pulled, you know? 
Okay, but, uh, but you got to tell me at least one story of when your kids did, you don't have to tell me what they did, but when they didn't make the right decision and when you actually had to be a parent. Whoa. Because I, uh, I think no, there had to have been a time. We did. Um, my The kids were little. Tyler was probably six-ish, six, uh, probably about six years old. Uh, they were playing with the neighbors. Uh, we were in a, in a little condo complex and uh they were in the neighbor they were playing with the neighbor and they were playing out whatever they were doing i had the windows and doors open and and all of a sudden the kids come running in and they hide behind furniture and i was like whoa what are you guys doing thinking they were just kind of playing you know and uh tyler's like oh we we broke the window and so i was like what what happened and he's like i and he looks at me like he's gonna get in trouble i was like what do you what do you got and he's like I hit a rock and it broke the window. So I was like, well, let's go take a look. So we go out and we take a look and sure enough, second story, somebody's like bedroom window, you know, got a hole through it. And, um, and the, the parent, Ed, he ran like all the kids and the parent ran. <laughs> uh, so, so I was like, well, I was like, you got to go talk to the manager and uh, let her know that you broke the window. Right. And you gotta, <laughs> yeah. And you got to, um, you, you know, offer to, work it off. And, um, and so little kid and, and Tyler, I don't have his picture right here. Uh, long blonde hair, blue eyes. Jay had brown hair and brown eyes. Ty's got blonde hair, blue eyes, just the little cutest freaking cheeks in the world. And, uh, and he goes up and I had him knock on the, on the door with his little tiny knock and the manager comes up and, uh, the manager is like, you know, what's wrong? And he's already crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I broke the window and, and it's just pouring tears. And she's like, oh my God, that's too cute. She's like, well, let's go take a look. And so, uh, so we, we look and she's like, okay, well, you know, and he, she's like, we'll find out what the charge is. And he's like, can, can, can I do, do, do chores? And she's like, she's like, oh, oh my God, cute. you don't have to do that. We've got insurance. And I was like, no, he broke the window. It's his job to, to fix it. So. She gave him some chores to do. Ed, the parent, came out, and he was like, dude, I feel so small. He's like, <laughs> I'll pay for it. And, uh, and I was like, he still has to do his chores. He still has got to make it up. So she had him sweep up some little stuff. He was the freaking cutest little thing. Oh, my uh, God, that's adorable. But, yeah, no, always uh, another story, just because I'm a storyteller. Um, <laughs> my youngest uh, was kind of kind of scrappy, and uh, we were on an inter-district transfer. So, um, so the last month of school, he got in his, in his third fight. And after that, they would have to expel him to another school. Oh. Uh, and they couldn't guarantee because of the time of the year, if he was going to be able to come back into Gwen Foss the next year. And, uh, and I, I, I just dug the school and it was a good school. And, um, so, so the principal of Miss Jenkins, she was awesome, awesome lady. And she's like, she's like, um, you know, just letting you know, like, you know, if he gets in another fight. And I was like, all right, well, I can't risk it, so I want him benched. And she's like, the whole, the whole month, like, you don't have to do that. He's, as long as he doesn't get in another fight, he's fine. And I was like, no, no, uh, I can't risk it, so yeah. I want him benched. But I'll be sitting with him every day, uh, serving the time with him. So I came over twice a day during the morning break and at lunch, and I sat with him that last month of school. And uh, we had lunch together, and we'd sit there, and the, their friends would come over, and they'd have that to tell That sounds like them a reward to bench. me. Uh, it was for me. It was a little <laughs> bit for me. Uh, it sucks for him. But, uh, but I think uh, he still remembers that, and he remembers that, uh, that I did it with him. Uh, right. You know, uh, it was a uh, – it's kind of under that philosophy of uh, I wouldn't ever ask a person to do something I wouldn't do myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, how the hell could I ask – I put him there. Right. I put him there because I did. I could see further than he could, uh, and that's all I really got as a parent. That's all I really got as a human being. Is I've got my experiences, so I can let you know something about me. I right. can let you know my experience, and I, and, you know. But uh, but other than that, like uh, it's only fair that that if I put him through that, then uh, that I would do it with him. So that's yeah. a great Sorry story. That. A super blabbery. <laughs> that's I okay. love my parents. I love my kids. Uh, I love my kids, and and then I love this industry. Yeah, you're blowing it up in the industry. So, um, 
so Tina. Well, I'm no Tina, longer parenting no. full time. <laughs> well, and, you know, what a big difference that makes, right? Neither am I. And suddenly I'm like, okay, full blown, you know, full speed ahead as fast as humanly possible because I'm so passionate about what I do and I don't have to be the chauffeur anymore and I don't have to um, go to to karate demonstrations and dance recitals and gymnastics ex exhibitions. How do you say that word? I can never say that word. Exhibitions? Thank you. Um, so I don't have to do that anymore. So it's like suddenly it's like, oh, no more doctor's appointments, right? Everybody handles their own doctor's appointments. That alone in my house, which we had a lot of medical issues, in my house is just like freeing. And now I'm just like hyper-focused, right? In, in a relationship, building my business even bigger than before, changing careers. Um, I'm actually looking to sell the house soon and I'm going to be moving to my sister who I don't know if she's still not with her, but um, to Atlanta to, which I'm really excited about where the weather's not so cold because here in New York, it's freezing. Speaking and of, I probably should, uh, cut out my, um, uh, so um, I did something kind of bold when my, uh, youngest graduated. Um, there was no need to stay in Tustin, uh, to, to, um, because they weren't in elementary school anymore. I'm not in a district anymore. So I didn't have to stay there anymore. So uh, two weeks after he graduated, my lease was up anyhow. And, um, and I was living in Orange County. Rents are high. Everything's high. Um, and we're starting this company that I don't make any money off of. Um, <laughs> we got to work on that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I, uh, and I had cool furniture. I had um restoration hardware stuff. I had remnant stuff from uh, casino projects that I've worked on. I've got, uh, you know, I, when, when, I, when I was making money, I was making good money and we had some cool stuff. And, and uh, a second, two weeks after my son graduated, I, uh, I packed a, a suitcase and a backpack and uh, a couple of those free little oil bags that you, they give you at market. Yeah. And, uh, and I locked the door of my condo, and I told you, the landlord, um, you can sell everything in it. And, uh, and I moved up to my brother's place in Lancaster, um, wow. sleeping on his couch while we bootstrap and, and build this platform for the design community. Um, I, uh, my mom had a shit. Uh, my mom was like, uh, you know, you don't want to put your stuff in storage. And I was like, well, mom, either, either this is going to succeed so so well that it's not going to matter or it's going to fail so bad that it's not going to matter. So uh, that's just stuff. And I can go get stuff again some other time. Uh, right now I want to go change the world. So yeah. on that yeah. note, my brother is moving today. And I don't know if you heard the, the background stuff or occasionally where I'm like, you got to look like that. Um, they are, they probably need my help. Uh, they're not All right, in the yeah, room no, right I'm now, gonna, but I'm gonna. I know. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to reschedule with you, Shachina, because I know you haven't been able to really get on a lot. It's hard. It's hard when you're Sorry on audio. About that. <laughs> it's hard when you're on audio and you're with Joe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I love talking to you, um, but it's just hard because she can't see the faces and she can't, you know, just talk. I, I know this by the phone is better for reach, but I'll tell you, I might go back to be live for a little while because I've had these connection issues every time um for the last couple of times beef up your wi-fi throw it on airplane mode uh have the callers do the same thing uh it really makes a difference uh the benefit to this is and the trick to it and this is why our talk show is a talk show mm -hmm. uh every time somebody joins it, it it uh facebook lets their network know that they're live too yeah so right away our numbers start climbing super fast uh the one we did cleared 2,200 while we were still live. Uh, so, you, oh, well, I was on with you. I think I was going to say that was mine. I don't know what your yeah. other ones have done since, but yeah, that was with you and I. Um, because yeah, the, the trick is definitely sharing, right? I go, we have to go onto our personal page to do it this way, but we share on our business page and then I share in my private group, um, which I just renamed to Actionable Entrepreneurs. So anyone who is actually taking action to build their business, that's what I love, that's what I do, and that's the people I'm looking to help support in my private Facebook group. So Actionable Entrepreneurs, look us up. 
I'd love to have you there. Um, and yeah, this is the best way to go when it comes to reach, but the technology, or talking on with me, or just talking with me. You I just talk to you. Know. I'll just talk to you every Friday for weekend wind down. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody came on. Who was it? She said, uh, Natasha Jones. She's like, Joe again. Yeah, I'm a social media hooker. Hi, Natasha. My name is Joe, <laughs> social media hooker. You may not want to shake my hand. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so true. You're on constantly. Well, right now you're building an empire, and that's where you need to be, and that's that's what happens. And you don't have any young kids at home. That's I don't, so I can walk around neat. pantless. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting your shirt on before this broadcast. I yeah, no, no. It was, oh, crap. Oh, let me throw that on. <laughs> so, all right. So, Nobody I am going to say goodbye because we had some technical issues. I think we lost a lot of people in the beginning. Um, but I will be doing this again. It's Thursday today because tomorrow's a holiday. It's weekend wind down with Nancy. I'm a business coach. I like to talk to entrepreneurs from all walks of life on different topics. And there's probably whiskey in there, I'm thinking. Uh, coffee. It's never been it's, coffee. It's not coffee. Um, it's five o'clock somewhere in the world. So uh, thanks for being here. If you were here sharing, as Joe would say, I'm stealing this from him and he stole it from someone else. Sharing is caring. <laughs> where'd, you see, where'd you steal that from? I didn't. I didn't. But thank you. That was cool, though. <laughs> I actually, I don't know where that came from, but I kept watching Come on, there people There was a commercial like that somewhere, Sharing is Caring. It comes, it's probably from like an old 70s commercial. I know it's in my memory somewhere. I'll figure it out. So uh. um, <laughs> I'll be here next Friday for Weekend Wind Down. I have no idea who my guest is next Friday, but I will be here. Um, and I'll probably I try, try to, to do jump between... on that one too. Yeah, you're going to just try to jump on everyone that I do. That's okay. Because you, you're, you're my you're savior. Alive. If you're alive, I'm jumping on your stuff. It's, I'm coming at you. From the coming distance. Coming at you. From the distance. <laughs> so, Shatina, are you still there? I think we lost her completely. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll All have right. to reschedule with her um, the toilet paper commercial. The toilet paper commercial. Sharing is caring. I don't know that one. Oh my God! I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna send it to you. Send me a send me a gif or a meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! The description when my kids tried to in describe fact, to me what's if a meme. If anybody mom, has that, add the add the gif or the meme in the comment section of the live, and it'll keep this whole thing going. Uh, Isn't and it then GIF? also, I like to uh, gif. gif. Gif, not gif. GIF. It's not Jiffy peanut butter. Something. All right. Someone tell uh, us who's right. <laughs> Me also, or Joe? <laughs> also, in the comment section, what's great about this is add your company URL. Look how uh, well he points. It has Look. really good. <laughs> I concentrate on it really good. Uh, and put your URL. Uh, these reach thousands of people. Uh, so it's a good opportunity to, to share. Um, mention people. Uh, so if you think anybody who uh, could... You got that single parent. You got that person that's juggling parenting and, and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, mention them in the comment section. Hit the you know share what? And button, hit the share. share. Mention. You know what? I'd love to hear what people want to talk about. Right. So I'd love to hear more about what people want to talk about. Put your business um, URL in the comments button. So when people watch, they can see that you are watching too. It'll drive business to you or your business Facebook page. And like Joe said, share. Sharing is caring, and I'm going to find that toilet paper commercial that started that whole thing, even though you think you were the original one. <laughs> I don't even know why you're questioning it. That's weird. That's weird. I can't believe that up. I made up the word sharing, and then separately I was like, caring. And so I was like, you know what? I didn't make up the word is, but I made up these other two words. I submitted them to, to Webster's, and oh I was God. like, you know, they should all go together. With a hashtag, I, I guarantee, made it up I myself. guarantee, which I love. The hashtag sharing is caring. It's all yours, Joe. But if there was a you know, 70s or 80s say, commercial, Caden's going to end up finding it first and sending it to you. I, I, I will say that the, the word Care Bears was in my, in my, you know, my, 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 my lexicon of words, I think. Is that mm -hmm. a word? Mm -hmm. uh, but not the caring part. That one I made up. I added the ING. That was all me. Uh, right. Sharing is caring. That was all me. I mean, hashtag sharing is caring in honor of Joe who made it up. No fact checking, kidding. No <laughs> fact checking on that one. Yeah. So good luck moving your brother. And believe it or not, Shashina just messaged me that she had to hop off because her daughter is in the ER. 
So, oh, no. I don't know. Right? We're just talking about parenting and growing a business and being an entrepreneur. Well, people hit share for, for that cause right there. Oh, I know. I definitely have to have her on again another time. So, all right. So have a great night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Share, put in comments, uh, put in your Facebook URLs. Uh, we love to see who's been watching. All right. Have a great night. Thanks, Joe. Bye.